Yo, 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 this is Marvin Priest and this is One for the Road. You done know. Yo, right now, this is William Gone and this is One for the Road. You heard? All right, boy. This is Rince and this is One for the Road. Shout out to MC. Let's get it. Gotta pop my hair down. Last time I had no steam coming up. <laughs> crazy. Be crazy. Looking crazy, man. I'm feeling crazy at the moment, you know. There's there's yeah, as I was all saying, man, there's a lot of uh, yeah, content coming out and just being that kind of person or being that platform yep. for Australia, for, yep. for for amazing artists like yourself. Yep. Doing the due dil- diligence yep. in respect to you you put a song out, you do a show. Yep. Let's let's make sure people more people can hear it. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So here we have uh Marvin Priest. Uh <laughs> I was thinking of things to say, but <laughs> really, man, I mean, you, you're someone who, who's come to Australia to live and set up your residence, man, and brought your energy, brought your amazing music mm-hmm. and blessed our country with just vibes on vibes, man. <laughs> so it's, it's really great that you've, you've, you're here mm-hmm. and you're able to um, influence other artists, keep yes. people happy on the radio waves. Yes do amazing shows and uh yeah man i really appreciate you coming yeah not only to australia <laughs> but for being on uh, another one for the road so we have yes. one marvin priest here for another one for the road man big up respect, to yourselves bro bless him respect you know what it is yeah 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 <laughs> good man hey ha- what's been happening man since um since the show um just recording i've been rehearsing with the band um you know we've got an album coming out with the band um crown heights as um as you saw with the band yeah so that uh that's coming out when was that coming out next two months um we're just getting the next single ready at this present time um so it's just been just been vibing with them obviously recording for myself as well um just getting ready for more music man and then obviously the summer's coming so there'll be more shows coming again so just rehearsing for that and just preparing for yeah preparing for the summer for sure man yeah. with crown heights was that your idea to bring a band together did you think that you you obviously you wanted to have a band mm. was it your idea to kind of not just your idea for the band itself but like are you are you the one that kind of keeps people together because obviously you've got a history of, of amazing music yes that that helps things stick together yeah tell well, me talk to me about that yeah well um yeah so in regards to the band well as a as a, a solo artist when you're doing the shows on your own it makes sense to have a band behind you because um, that's when you get the bigger shows, um, you know, other than just having a DJ, it's it's great to have a band behind you. Now, in regards to uh, Crown Heights itself, um, how it came together was I was working with a guy um, previously and me and him was um, like doing work, music together and um, he was like, okay, we need to get a band together. So we pulled some guys together, got a band together. Um, yeah, and I come up with the name Crown Heights and kind of yeah it's that it started from there really um I'm yeah it's a good name man it's uh it's it's a nice it's a great name and and the synergy you guys had at the Oz versus vibes was mm-hmm. amazing too everyone sort of had their role and they all came together and hearing back the actual audio file yeah, i can't wait to see it i can't wait <laughs> but even just hearing it yeah it sound uh, good yeah yeah like this your your your, your track i need it oh, i was listening it. to it in the car i'm like man this is a mad tune right but then i'm like <laughs> I don't know if I kind of like the live version more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick, sick, sick. Well, yeah. Um. Well, that's what I mean. Even that version of "I Need It." That song was written by the guitarist. Um. That's in the band, Jason. He wrote. The, he actually wrote the song. Wow. Um. And he brought the song to us. And uh, Rick, who was in the band before, he he done the um the chorus, and then uh Dufty, who's the other singer, he done the verses. Um. I jumped on there as well. And yeah, it's a, it's a great song, man. It gives a really good vibe, a really good energy, good video clip as well. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that song. Yeah, I think it has more life to it, you know? Like, yeah, no, of course. As people rediscover it. I've heard artists, they, they put a song out and like three years later, it just kind of gets discovered off some like a TikTok or something and then it kind of takes off again. No, so, of course. Well, the thing is with, with, the, with the band Crown Heights, um, you have to remember they're like a, a newish act. I, I myself, I've been around since like 2008. Like, do you get what I mean? So even... Even um, even the, even for myself, I'm still a, kind of classified as a newish artist because there's artists that's been around before me. But Crown Heights is like a brand new act, so you can't like obviously with the songs as you said, we're gonna rework all of the songs anyway because they're always gonna need that that energy of once there's uh you know you know for yourself as we, with your YouTube channel like when it gets when it starts to pick up, you, some of the older stuff will, will pick picks back up as well. Do you get what I mean? So and you remaster like I'll redo a thumbnail. And I'll redo the playlists. 
and I'll kind of work it out that way, 100%. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So that, that's what will happen with the older song. So as I keep pushing with the band, pushing with uh, new material, that, that it will get better as time goes. You know? Yeah, so you yeah. said 2008, you started to make music. Mm -hmm. That's some time ago. Mm -hmm. However, is that when you first started recording music? And where were you? I was in, at that time, I was in America. Um, I had moved from London to say, like, you know, I'm, I want to really, like, try and be a musician. Do you get what I mean? So I moved to America. Um, and that was my first. Obviously, I had tried stuff in London before, um, but not, not like, not taking it serious. Mm. Smucking around my friends, my brothers, my, my siblings. But I went to America, like, no, let me show everyone, like, because obviously my dad being who he is no one's not really going to take me that serious like you know so it's like no i'm going to show you look like i'm i'm really serious like so i went to america um and that's when i actually started recording properly like for myself and like really hearing my own sound what i could do to, you know so um when you say taking music seriously mm -hmm. when did you decide that was it because you're you've got yeah your dad and and, and such an amazing influence on mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. What was it like growing up from like the early ages, from like five to 10, 15, well, like, like yeah. and, and, and you're like, you're hearing it and you've got all these influences. And then t tell me how you kind of decided, you know what, I actually, I really feel like this is me because it. I know it, we all know it's you now. Some yeah. people might say, yeah, I got to be like my dad, you know, yeah, like right, go, right. To go to the, go to go to war like my dad. And then they yeah. get to the front line and they're like, no, nah, I can't do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. I will, look. Like, um, oh, how can I explain? It's like, you get to a point, um, a certain age where, you know, you're like, I need to do something. So it's like, I'm hanging out with my mates. We're doing stuff, bad stuff, good stuff, or mixture of stuff, you know. Um, but it gets to a, a point where it's like, what am I going to do? Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what's my role? Where am I going to play my part in this thing called life? Where do I, where's my- Your purpose. Yeah, where's my place? Your am journey. I just gonna yeah. do a nine to five? Am I just gonna do this? Am I just gonna follow like, you know, wh what's mine? So it's like- Ask dad to pay your rent. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> am I gonna, do, literally like we've got big house in London. Am I just gonna live in the house forever? Like what's what's, what's your, where are you, what are you gonna do Marvin? So it's like- We're gonna do that podcast over at your dad's house one time. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Of course bro, it's a sick house. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, what was my, it's like, it gets to that point. So it's like, um. I said to my dad, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do this music thing. And he's like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, How yeah. many, do you have any siblings? Yeah, I've got loads. I've got like uh, eight brothers and sisters, bro. Like, like a Mali vibe here. Yeah, bro. Like, so so were, they, were they saying like, they want to be musicians as well? Or? Well, um, yeah, some of them, a couple of them do music. Not many, only two really do it seriously. Uh, like the, uh, I've got a producer, one that produces and a brother that sings as well. Um, he's in, one of them's in America, one in London. Um, so then you said to your dad, you want to be a musician? Yeah, and he's like, he, well, he, he, he first things first. He's gonna always say, "Nah, I prefer you to be a doctor or a lawyer," because he obviously he like knows the music business is not the easiest business to be in. Do you get what I mean? So his first step is, "Nah, you sure you want to do that?" Mm. And then it's like, "All right, yeah, you want to do it. All right, whatever you say that. Like, are you being serious? Like, how can I prove to you that I'm serious?" So it's like, other than just being in the studio, it's like, "No, I'm gonna go to America. I'm gonna, you know, go to studios." be brave a bit, go into some, un, you know, territories I've never been to before, put myself in some awkward situations, go to some meetings, write some songs for some people. Do you know what I mean? Just like really experience what it's like to be an artist, but not under the guise of my dad mm. the whole way. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, did he help a bit? Like, cause like I know my parents, like I got to go to Peru. Mm -hmm. I chipped in a little bit, but mm -hmm. they said, Tim, go to Peru mm -hmm. when you're 15, yeah. travel the world, get these experiences. I went to Mexico. I got, I got a government grant. Like I, I always got I, a lot of help. Did you get a bit of I, help? I got the help once I made the step. So me saying it in London, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But once I've got to America and he's actually seeing me <laughs> like, you know, I'm in places like studios. Oh, I heard you was there doing some backing vocals for someone. Oh, like once he saw me there. It's like, don't sleep, like, sleep on the street. Here's some. It's like, no, not, so necessarily, not even that. It's like more so I'm in America. He's coming to America a lot because he's, you know, doing a lot of shows there, doing a lot of work himself, mm. you know, so he's spending a lot of time there. Once he sees that I'm there doing the work and putting in the hours, he then's like, he then goes, okay, 
you know, what are you going to do? He's like, I say, I'll come on tour with you. Like, you know, he's like, oh, really? So then I, that's how it started for me working with him first. It's like I came on tour. I'm doing backing vocals. I, you know, come out, I do a song as well. And I'll come and rock the show with him, you know, and give it the energy, the youthful energy, you know, and yeah. give it a vibe. Yeah. And that was my beginning of getting on the road into recording and really doing it. Like that was... 2000 yeah 2008 2009 how long were you touring for um i toured for three years to 2011 all right um, what was that like i mean how, how big were some of the crowds oh mate you're talking uh the biggest probably thirty thousand. New Zealand, maybe. Um, you didn't love reggae, man. Oh, mate, ridiculous, crazy. They're the island, you know? yeah, bro. Yeah. But uh, but loads of them, loads of shows like that. Loads yeah. of twenty thousands, twenty five thousand, fifteen thousand, ten thousand. Talk me through 5, before 000. you're getting on a on a on a, on a stage. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling like before you get onto a stage of thirty thousand people? Um. Oh, honestly, now at this, uh, it's, how old were you? I would have been. 20 mid 20s and that mid 20s yeah. yeah so you're still you're like oh i better uh, uh, but uh, to be better honest to be honest by that time i i felt not confident like listen anything you do if you haven't got a bit of butterflies in you if you haven't got a little bit then you sh i don't i'm not this what's the best word to pay to put it well nervousness gives you adrenaline it gives you adrenaline and you need it makes you be sharp mm. so you're actually thinking a little bit about what you're doing whereas i feel if you haven't got that you might be a little bit too relaxed and you might miss something it might not be major but you might miss something a little bit so i always feel the butterflies is a good thing it's not afraid you're just a, it's like a bit of adrenaline a bit of butterflies it's like oh let's get ready for the show do you mm -hmm. get what i mean but never afraid um i've been I've never been afraid of crowds or anything like that. And I, oh, I've, as I said, I've had the luck of having my dad. So yeah. imagine you're going to, if you're going to go to war with anyone, it's your old man. Like, do you get what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It, 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 the times of when I first was first doing it and was a, might have been a bit nervous. I've, I'm just turning around, it's my dad there. And, it's, uh, and I'll look for him. It's like even my first making mistakes of being live bum notes, miss hitting the note, not doing it. It's, I got him. And he he's not like the oh you're right so he's like hey hey what was that mate he, <laughs> he does yeah, the, bum yeah, note, the whole show bro oh my god you were so flat yeah. like do you get what I mean yeah good, and good I could feedback go, real honest yeah feedback. bro yeah, oh yeah. man I sat there and took it like oh my gosh like ah oh. but it made me learn so I know I've I've gone through all of that like. So, so you, you were kind of doing this and it's like this fine balance of of yeah being you know nervous and also being relaxed mm -hmm. how have you worked out your career to you know be the be be the artist you are have mm -hmm. the energy mm -hmm. the the vibes mm -hmm. and and being all turned up and, and getting ready for a show and touring and traveling oh, and, oh. And, and but then also not losing yourself how do you not lose yourself when you are performing in front of large crowds, you're touring, you're meeting a lot of people, meeting a lot of guys and girls, I, man. I, like, I, 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 Honestly, I think it's because I love it. I think that because I love it so much that that's where all of the energy, all of the vibe, all of the, all of that, like someone might say it's a persona, but it's for me, it's like, as soon as I'm like, oh, showtime, showtime. Yes. Like, do you get what I mean? That's me. Whereas, other people might be showtime. Oh man, I got to do a show. It's like, oh, that's not me at all. My, that's when I, um, oh, people like they're gonna get a chance to enjoy the vibe with me. We're gonna do this. Like, do you get what I mean? So it's like, to never compromise that that feeling and and what that is. Let's say by partying too much the night before or going, you know, like because I'm, I'm trying to sort of see how you've you've survived because you know like. You know, I, I don't know, like, f the full Bob Marley story, but, mm. you know, he was, I mean, he's huge. Mm -hmm. And and maybe you just become so big that your your body wears away. That can happen. You of know? course it can. Yeah, of course. And I've seen it happen to a lot of people. Um, You can. You can definitely drain yourself. But, mm. I mean, it's, it's also experiencing it and learning how to balance it. It's like... Um, and your dad balanced it. That's, what I, that's my point. And still balances it to this day. Mm. So it's like, yeah... 
you know how far you can go. Like we've been on, I've been on tour and caught pneumonia before. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I know the, the experience. And you have to perform. Is, well, no, I, it got to a point where I was, I performed with pneumonia. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, and then went home sick with pneumonia. Like, oh, I didn't know what it was when I was first on the tour, but that's what can happen when you're constantly on the road, you're up in the plane, up and down, up and down, up and down. But again, with experience, you then learn the things that what you need. So it's like, I know that sleep is one of the most important things. It's like, you have to get your eight hours, like at minimum. That some people, oh, I can work off of six, I can work off of this. If you want to run your body for a good 12 hours, and pump it out like excuse my language pump it out, sounds crazy but um you know what i mean if you want to if you want to run you need eight hours it's very important if you want to food consumption eating food you might be so busy you forget that you need to eat that's where the energy comes from like do you get what i mean these are really really important things that people just don't factor in so when you're touring and you're going around and you're enjoying enjoying yeah do it but i'm still gonna if i'm going back to the hotel at three o'clock in the morning, I'm getting my eight hours still. I'm, you're not going to get me up at nine. I'm going to get my eight hours. I'm going to make sure I eat. I'm going to make, do you get what I mean? So it's like just being aware of that can make you last. And obviously, as I said, I've learned from my dad. So I watch and see and learn. And Yeah, and you seem mm. quite grounded as well because at the Oz versus Vibes show, you know, there was not 30,000 people. There was an amazing crowd there, mm. but it wasn't like a, big uh concert kind mm -hmm. of thing it was a whole vibe i mean it was actually kind of like a concert itself yeah. but it wasn't like a festival let yes. me put it that way yeah um but the energy you had and the excitement i saw you know filming you um you just seem to just yeah genuinely love the show yeah and that's a testament to you and and what you said you're breaking down that you know the diet the food the sleep mm -hmm. and everything like that so now you're here in melbourne mm -hmm. and you're juggling different things you were just saying before, I didn't even realize you had a, a, a daughter, you yes. know, so that's amazing too. Yes. I have a daughter as well, a young, you know, young queen, yes. a young princess. Mm -hmm. And um, how's that been? Um, that, what's that experience like, man? Is oh, it's amazing. It's a, um, it's a great experience, you know, having a daughter, you know, like um, just enjoying time, just growing with her and teaching her things. Like we're learning guitar, we're learning swimming, we're learning singing. She's now um, doing a bit of modeling now. Do you get what I mean? She's getting some casting calls and stuff. So I'm just enjoying that, watching, just being able to mold someone, you know, in, in a good way, mm. in a nice way. And just like, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't really explain. That's I'm awesome, just, I'm with her today. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I was just like, me and her just talking and vibing. I'm just really, it, it really gives me um, a really good passion. Purpose you know? again. Yeah. Another like, sort of journey, you know. Mm. To, 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 yeah that's awesome man no we've got to yeah. we've got to link up man and, yeah, yeah bring it together, my daughter bro. sings too like she's <laughs> yeah, singing yeah, that, all the I'm time saying, man bro, musicals like... and everything you know <laughs> what i mean and she's hitting notes man brah oh man I'm i've like, got my playing the guitar now and it's Gu wow. um i'm just like yeah um, do you play the guitar yeah i play yeah play bit, yeah so i just yeah. Like, you know i let her strum along. I, what i do is i just like hold the notes and let her just strum along you know so, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely grounds you, man. And it's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, and, and, you know, it's a good thing, like, again, to keep you um, not constantly music. Oh, da, 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 training your head. No, I can, I can sign myself with my daughter. You know, family time is it's important as well, bro. Yeah, you should roll the plaque down tonight, man. You know what I'm saying? But you've got that, you've got these, you know, plaques and then there's accolades and everything. Yes, yes. But then you kind of come down to what is it all really what what are we doing here on on earth you know yes. what do you what is what is your your purpose here i mean obviously it's music is it spreading the message what do you want to bring to the next generation do you see um, the kids out there like do you, do well, you have of any of course well it, even even like even for myself like um like in my where i'm from in london obviously my dad has, has made it out you know done done well from where we came from which is a Bit of a tough area, you know what I mean? Where was that? In South London. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Bit of a tough. Like, not to say not, not not like we're weak or anything like that, but you know, you got to be strong to get get through. Um, what were some of the things that? Um, it's just were, like that oh, your family I, was dealing with. How can I explain? Just uh, being the area. Um, how can you use it with, in good words? Uh, just an urban area, the best way. Like from the get from the rougher sides of London, where the money isn't. 
as high. You know, you come from council estates. We call council estates mm. as, you know, uh, what do you call it here? Centrelink, I guess. Australia, you call government it. Government housing. Government housing. Yeah. Housing. Yeah. yeah. So we, that's where we're. Flats. We're, mm. Yes, that's where yeah. we come from. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. That's our, that's where we're from. So when you come from that kind of environment, like even my dad started from there. Do you get what I mean? So it's like, I, I, we've been lucky because it's not like, you know, obviously he's been very successful and I've been successful as well. Like, do you get what I mean? We've had um, other people be successful as well from our area, um, soccer players, boxers, uh, a few actors, and like a lot of people have come through some business owners as well, but- But the um, majority don't. Yes, do you get what I mean? So. Coming from there, my dad got through and it's like uh, coming uh, and myself coming through from there as well. Um, it wasn't easy. So it's like, you know, you, you, you got a battle with people saying to you, you need to work other than trying to be an artist or be artistic because you need to bring food to the table. So when did you start bringing food to the table with your career? Like, was it when those big records came through? Um, or was yes. it like just tour, like uh, touring? Touring. Touring, start, touring first. Yeah. Yeah, that's when the, the money, you, get, mm. you start getting paid well. What were getting, some of the checks like? I mean, you know, just just so people can know like and what to aspire to. <laughs> just ages ago, the first okay, ones. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, some of them. All right. Know, um, yeah. Oh, man. All right. You could get 10, 10 grand. 10 grand a show. US. Five, yeah. yeah. Five grand a show. Yeah. Um, you know, And that's okay. kind of, you're supporting as well? No, oh, 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 oh you mean, okay, as supporting, you're, you're, you're more like, no, uh, to be honest, as a supporting act in the beginning, you're going to more so get wage. So you might get. Right. Yeah. So, so, you, so the head, you can get. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to say so because the, the, mm. the headliner will get what they're getting and you'll more so get booked for tours so you'll do a tour and you'll get this is what you're going to get for the tour do you get what and i they'll, mean they'll, they'll deposit every week or you get you get weekly wage or you can get half up front half there because you have to remember you get paid for tour you also get your per diem which is your food money just like a film eat. production exactly yep. mm -hmm. so um but yeah in the early stages yeah you might get you know three four grand a week do you get what i mean you might do three four shows in 2010 yeah, do you get what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, you do you're doing okay. Um but yeah, as time goes on and you start getting your own bookings and you start getting into your own ten grand yourself, fifteen, twenties, you know, and that's when you're yeah. So you either save or you ball out. <laughs> yeah, well, you do a bit of both. Because <laughs> again, you got yeah. you gotta have you gotta you gotta have life experiences. Yeah. So you gotta have the you gotta experience some things, you know. So you gotta experience a bit of balling out, you gotta experience a bit of the um spending and losing mm. and, and getting it but making what it have, back. what have you spent like in when you quit oh. like what, what are some of the, the cool things that some of the kids are watching now you know ah, really i would say more so like jewelry and like clothes mm. you know a few i bought a few chains it's a tax write-off man it's the image isn't it um i weren't really big into cars to be fair yeah. you know no i bought a few cars but nothing like crazy like i bought a bmw mm. um, but nothing like Nothing, nothing incredible. Um, I bought a few houses. I bought two houses. Mm. I guess that would be the most that I've spent money on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Probably property. Um. So that's why it seems like you can't. Like you, you're cool to just. You, yeah. Because you've. I think with artists, the one of the biggest things that I'm talking to artists about that mm. are just coming up mm -hmm. is the work-life balance, mm -hmm. paying the bills. Mm -hmm. My uncle who's doing. Now he's doing like fifty thousand dollar live video shows. Like right. he films conferences and stuff, and Sick. he's but he's you know he's fifty some sixties whatever. He's in sixties, right. so it's like he deserves that. But right. he, he um and and he he's doing these big uh big budget productions. Mm -hmm. He just told me also said just pay your bills, Tim. Just yes. keep paying your bills. That's so what right. what advice would you have for like up and coming artists uh, uh, in terms of financial uh, 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 not financial uh, advice? You know, well but, no no. But yeah, this know. is the this is the real truth of it, right? The, Not everyone gets a ten thousand dollars show. Nope. And the reality is, before you start making money through whatever art it is you do, whether it's videography or photography mm. or mm. music or whatever it is, yeah, keep your nine to five and don't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily say be do nine to five full time. Maybe do part time, but always have some kind of income to pay your bills and to eat, even if it's noodles and you have a, a studio apartment, whatever it is, so long as you can maintain yourself, 
you know, to eat and to have a roof over your head. Um, the rest of your time you can put into everything else. I wouldn't tell any, I wouldn't advise any artist, especially in today's day and age, to pack up everything thinking that you're going to make an income through music straight away or through whatever it is kind of art. Some people are lucky. You know, you can get lucky. You can land into a, a great position, a great place. But again, percentage-wise, when we talk about percentage-wise, you're talking less than 1%. Like, do you get what I mean? And then, and then, so you have to make sure you do that first, um, and then everything else will fall into place. Um, How have you seen the landscape change over the last, let's say, fifteen years? Because it's definitely <laughs> oh, mate. What are some of the high, like key changes you've the seen in the music? Key, key industry change seen? is is record sales. What do you mean the key hmm. key key change? That's probably the biggest thing. Being able to, you know. Um, Sell physical copies, a physical CD, sell a physical single, one ninety nine, ten ninety nine album, or whatever it is. Um, to now, someone's telling you, okay, you're going to stream a song, and in the hope that it's going to stream a billion streams to make some kind of profit from it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Snoop Dogg was saying, I don't know how you get a billion streams and you don't make a million dollars. It's not even a million. Like, don't get me wrong. I respect yeah. what they're doing. I respect it. Obviously, you know, it's great when you're on there, you've got some songs. So also, when you're in the car and you can go, I want to hear some Marvin Priest. I all I do is ask, hey, Siri, play Marvin Priest. 100%. It's great. I mean. But, but in returns of what you get in residuals back as for the artist, it's it's not fair. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't. So that's another thing what artists have got to understand is if you're talking about being an artist now in today's, you got to look at making sure your show your performance is on point. And that's why I make sure that's one important thing for me and my band to make sure the show is on point because you have to make sure that that, that can be toured around so you can make money. Your arcs, most acts today, um, other than obviously the big selling acts like Taylor Swift, et cetera, most of them are making money through touring. That's where they survive. They'll do a few tours per year even, and then that will cover them for the year. Do you get yeah, what I and mean? then while you're touring, you might get some footage that makes a song go viral. We did that for Rema, you know. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's my point, though. And you're for, and and then and then obviously other things will pick up from there. But touring is the, the key. So that yeah. almost doubled his music sales that Sick. moment. Yeah, yeah. That's like, and he was on radio saying. That's my biggest moment. Sick. And I can't wait to see what these guys do with their platform now. Sick. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, we could just have like a few percent of those sales, man. <laughs> but get, yeah, yeah, that's that's it, my advice to any new yeah. act. Yeah, bro. Mm. Uh, just, just, just to, um, yeah. And obviously, if you're young enough and you're lucky enough, you might still be at home with your parents. Stay at home. Mm. 100% knock out as much I think of your a, art a lot of as you can. Astra yeah <laughs> well art so a lot of people I think in Australia who come from good homes <clears throat> and a stable environment and and feel a way to make they want to make music because mm -hmm. I don't know if you think people are born to make music I mean definitely get influenced but um they probably want to find different ways in which they can express their life but they might think I'm I've got a comfy life. Mm -hmm. How can I really talk about something hard or you, you know, don't really have any influences? What would you say? You know, how do you find inspiration to, to make music? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't like, obviously I, I wouldn't criticize anybody to tell them that they can't do anything creatively. Like if they have an imagination or they see music in that, or, or, or movies or whatever they is that influences them, I wouldn't tell them that they can't do it. Look at someone like Rick Ross. Mm. You know, he look at his background to where he came to today. Like, do you get what I mean? He was so always a federal it, correction officer. Yeah, something like, do you get what I mean? And then became the, the biggest boss rapper. It's like, so you can't <laughs> tell him, like, do you get what I mean? So it's like, uh, uh, so I wouldn't tell any artist. It's entertainment, yeah. Yes, because mm. it's entertainment. Mm. But personally, I have found through experience that your story and your experiences and your friends and your family members and the people that you have around you and that you that you see you'll find there's a lot of songs in just that alone yeah yeah the reggae scene reggae music is the roots it's the yes. heart the soul yes and and it comes from uh, pain and it comes from what i was telling you it comes from the the come people coming from the urban areas with lack of you know money, council estates, government housing. 
that pain of not knowing how you're going to pay the next bill. That's where a lot of the, the, the reggae comes from, you know? Retribution. Exactly. Revelations. Exactly. All that. Yes, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. The Rastafari, man. You, I mean, you're not really like, you didn't grow your dreads out or anything. No, uh, no, but I, I, but I still, but that's You're Jamaican, my, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. Jamaican and my father's a Rastafarian. So I grew up under the uh, Rastafarian um, yeah. you know, religion, but my mum was a Christian. So it's a mixture of being Christian and Rastafarian. Um, and What are the differences? Like, oh, I mean. Mate, uh, differences? Yeah, come on, there's loads. There's, I don't really, you well, know, uh, I yeah, mean, well, I'm okay. Christian. You know. Well, Christian, you know, they follow the Bible. Yeah. The Rastafarians, they, they follow more so uh, Haile Selassie. Yeah, Haile Selassie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's more where they follow, you know, he's, they say he's a blood descendant of Christ, you know, um, and that is more so their belief. So, uh, where the Christians obviously follow Jesus, God, the Bible, do you know what I mean? And I respect it all, like, um, but growing up, you know, uh, as you know, learning all different parts, um, even parts of the uh, you know, Muslim community stuff like Islam. Um, I take little bits mm. and create my own. You know what I mean? I believe in God. Um, but I have my own I don't have to go to a Christian church to say that. I don't have I don't have to go to Islamic church to, you know, to, I think you know, when you go to any of these holy places, there's an energy, there's a yeah. there's a there's a higher power, there's a spirit there. There, no, there is, but you I'm know? just saying I don't have to go there for myself, for mm. my beliefs. My 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 being in tune with God, I'm in tune. Like me and him have got a very good relationship. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And I don't likewise, I don't man. need to have anybody tell me about my relationship with him or how I should have my relationship with him. Yeah. Do you get but I don't think I mean? not everyone finds that and they kind of need to be told maybe, you know, because they don't have the music, the connection, the creativity. And mm. <clears throat> yeah, I think it is all, all about just being, you know, humble, humbling yourself and appreciating what you have. That's right. And then that's when you, you get that real connection that's with, right, with God. Bro. That's sick. You know? That's right. That is so true, bro. That's so true. Yeah, yeah, you've got to you've got to ask, or you you don't receive. You know, that's right. But you also have to ask in the way in which you're not you're not you're always putting maybe others first. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, that's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's yeah. Right. To get down to the truth of it. Now that oh, I believe in all, I believe in that stuff, bro. Because for me, you're um, if you want good things to happen for you, you have to have good thoughts positive mm. good thoughts and that's how things come in into fruition what's your view on like drill music uh, how do you feel when you hear it i i, I like it i like I'm, I'm different bro i like all music man because uh, look it because it, i understand where they're coming from so i understand where the they they where they even if it's negative I understand where they are coming from. Like, it's like, that's what their environment is. It's like, it's like when you go, like, especially like in London and you listen to them and they're talking about, yeah, chef, this one, da, 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 da. When you go outside and you actually go and follow what they're actually doing in their environments, it's real. It's, 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 they're talking exactly what's happening for them. Doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's a good thing. Um, but I don't, like, I'm not a big follower or listener to ah, oh, the music is influencing the youth so you need to stop the music no that's i'm not a follower of that because if that was the case then we would never have had rap music in the beginning we'd never have reggae music these are all music that were classified the as up. they were classified as rebellious yeah. in the beginning yeah do you get what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like uh, so i say you know you need rebellious music and I don't believe that it's the musical influence. It influences are things um, are, other, are led by other things. It's not the music for me. So I like drill. I, I respect it. I understand it. I'm not to say that I'm listening to it in my car going crazy every day. Like, do you get what I mean? But I respect, I respect it. Especially when someone, again, can come from these areas and create a living for themselves. Create a living for their whole family. Could You know, this could play, create generational wealth from what they're doing. So... Yeah, yeah I I agree mm -hmm. with you, man. Mm -hmm. I do respect it, mm -hmm. and I understand it mm -hmm. from uh, from uh, like a sim sympathetic point of view, not an empathetic. I, I can't empathize with that lifestyle, but mm -hmm. I can sympathize with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that you had some structure in your life mm -hmm. where you were turning the negativity into positivity through 
the rest of the. I was lucky ju- to have my dad. Yeah, I was lucky to have my dad. I was, and my dad was lucky enough to even stick to doing music himself because he, you know he would have went through the same thing where he was on a building site, you know, singing away. Ah, get carry on with your work, Max. Like what you did. <laughs> Shut up. Like do you get what I mean? So he persevered and 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 done done great. Yeah. And I had was lucky to have that vision that someone else can do it. Do you get what I mean? Like, no, you can get out. There's, it's not like, you're not like, you just got to have faith. He had his nine to five. He had his job. Yeah, he had a nine to five. My dad was a, yeah. Um, yeah, on a building site, construction. Wow. Yeah. Like, no, no BS, man. Like, mm. do you get what I mean? Uh, uh, but again, um, lucky enough to catch it a break early and stay, you know, consistent. And yeah. And again, like, you got to understand, in in his time, when you, um, it's not like now where you can be popular and not make no money. Like, do you get what I mean? He came from an era where when you're popular, you when you're when yeah. you get in, you're in. Yeah. Like, do you get what I mean? Like, let's go. Like, because it wasn't the internet wasn't buzzing like how it is today. It's like no, you're popular from TV and radio. Like, do you yeah, get what Drake I'm said, you know, I wouldn't want to something along the lines of, you know, hey, you got more followers than dollars, and I don't want to be that. Do you get and what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know, got more 100%, followers than dollars. Hundred percent. <laughs> Hundred percent. We're about to hit a million subscribers, man. I like to have a millionaire. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, we're here. We're still. The video is still recording. It's still, I keep checking to see if it's still going. The power's not out. It's all good. <laughs> I have to keep it real too, you know. And I, I, I think just yeah, sort of how I was saying in Australia, we've got it so good. We have Centrelink, we have government support, mm-hmm. we have, you know, mental health a- advocates and everything. People, like, try to put them down and stuff. But I think, you know, the inherent truth of it, it it's a great thing that mm-hmm. we've got all this support. Mm-hmm. And I think artists in Australia, the, some of the ones that I've had on the podcast, the Take One as well, I'm seeing the ones that I th- see are, are going to do really well. Mm-hmm. And they, the only part that they say, they go, oh, I'd just like to stunt out and just turn up a little bit. That's fine. That's a young man thing. That's a young person thing, mm-hmm. a young girl thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't take on a character that's not you. That doesn't sit right with your heart. It will It will never work. And you won't be able to afford to keep it up either. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, again, and again. Like, you've been to America. You see, I've been to the States over 10 times. And it is wild. From Florida to Los Angeles to San Francisco, to New York, York to yeah. Baton Rouge. I've been to Baton Rouge, yeah, like sick. Louisiana. I've never been there. That's sick. Where NBA <laughs> Young Boys from. That's sick. The guy's like, we're driving around, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's like 3 a.m., bro. <laughs> we're going to a show. It's like it's like 1 a.m., right? It's like 1 a.m. and the show's at like 3 and 2 chains is coming there. And sick, you know, bro. bro. We, we, go, we go chill. We have these Slurpees. They're full of alcohol. Sick. He's driving and dr- we're all just driving and drinking, whatever. I'm like, oh, shit, cool. All right, I'm going to chill out. And he's like, yo, man, got the chopper in the back. <laughs> he's got like AKs and shit. I'm like, oh, bro. I'm I'm like but th- it was Sick. so chill yeah, I-, I felt yeah, yeah. so like calm because mm-hmm. it's like this is just our life that's and right. we have to have guns that's right because the next man has a gun that's right and it's like respect mm. so people need to see and under well they need to understand that it may be traveling tra- i think traveling is so important yes 100 percent. again that was another experience for me um just even leaving london and going to america even going and then even coming to Australia, like I've like. What was it like I mean? when you came to Australia? What was the differences that you saw, uh, or that you felt like the people? I, 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 Australia was very similar to England for me. Mm. Yeah, very similar, especially like Melbourne, uh, multicultural. Just very similar, similar, similar vibe, um, but except for other better, better weather. Um, but yeah, very similar. <laughs> yeah, way better. Yeah, you get what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> this feels more like the islands, man. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no. We have to remember, for me, Australia became home due to circumstance for work. So, mm. you know, through the touring and, and, and doing music at that time, that's how I got my first record deal was through touring coming to australia on tour that's right do you get what i mean yeah. so it's like that's how it's like so you, you travel around um you know i tried um look at the second episode of one for the road it explains that yes, doesn't it yeah, yeah. i tried yeah i tried america mm. i didn't really try london to be fair mm. um i didn't really give myself a but i felt that because 
no one believed me in London. And especially because of the, my area and this, everything. I just like, oh man, I don't know. I just felt like, let me go to America. I want to go where they say, where this way, you where it's at. Yeah. They say, say you can make it, go to America. Yeah, like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah. So that's why. And then the on, American be, dream. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, I tried America for a bit and then just being on tour again, come to Australia and get offered a deal. Like, do you get what I mean? It's mm. like, oh, yeah. That like, set you up. This is, yeah. Do you get what I mean? It's like, this is, this is the part where, when you're thinking about what you're gonna do, where you're gonna be, what your story's gonna be, what your that's the the next stage, you know. You've made the step, you've made the steps, you're done the the, the road work. Now what happens next? Now you get a record deal. Like, do you get what I and mean? And how were you received? Where did you come? Did you go to which city? Sydney. Sydney. And mm -hmm. so you went to Sydney, mm -hmm. and people like. Yeah, I, this I, is yeah. Marvin Priest but, well, signed a deal. They must have been like. Let's get involved. Were there yeah. people around? Again, luck and being in the right place and touring. As I said, mm. it's so important because I come to Australia on a big tour. So the tour that we was on, it was called um, Ragamuffin. Ragamuffin wow. tour. Yeah. Bro, that's yeah, you would big, yeah. Right, man. so you're talking every show is minimum 10,000, 15,000. The Whalers were playing. Yes, yeah. bro, they was play Whalers. But the one we done, we done with Mary J. Blige. Wow. Do you get what I mean? Um, we done one with you, I think you'd be 40. Yeah. Like, just massive, bro. The, the, the music, where was the, in oh, the one in Melbourne? The one in the, the gardens? Yeah, p p oh, where was it? Oh, I was mate, say, I, I should know, I'm from Melbourne. But we done, I done, I done, I done Maya Bowl with them the as well. Sydney, yeah, Maya, done, Sydney, done Maya, that, sold out, yeah. yeah, sold out. Uh, um, but yeah, so when you're doing them kind of shows and you're getting in front of the people uh, as one of the, younger people on the tour, you can get a bit of a different reaction, especially with reggae. So I'm going out and just doing my little, ah, like, do you get what I mean? It's like, so um, doing that a few times uh, across the country, and then I get, go back home to America, and then I get booked for some gigs to come back, mm. but on my own. Mm. You know, and this is like, that's that's a big one. That's yeah, like, especially, oh, they want yeah, me. and especially with no not much. I think I put out, not even put out a song yet. I just put out songs on the internet. You know, like just I think that that time it was like MySpace. I think yeah, it might have been my, Facebook and MySpace maybe yeah, just yeah, them yeah. two. Like, do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And you get some good numbers on there. Yeah, like mm. that, especially like yeah, because the that, at that time the Facebook I, I I was just getting lots of really loads of feedback off of there. So you know. um so yeah, and then I come done some shows and then met some people. It's like, oh, I can introduce you to someone, introduce to label, et cetera, et cetera. And then, yeah. So <clears throat> so you're at now, you've got, um, obviously you've got your band, Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. You've, you've like there's artists like, like Rema, right? And he's mm -hmm. got this massive song that's streamed billions of times. Mm -hmm. That might be it for him. Like mm -hmm. in terms of the biggest thing that mm -hmm. he's done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's cool. It's like, Mm -hmm. this could be the biggest thing I'm doing, the podcast, whatever, right? And yes. then your life goes on, you know? Yep. So where are you now? Where What what do you want to do? Do you want to try to get another big song? Um, or, of course. Yeah. It's always, it's always it's, in you. It's always, it's always the, next, the next biggest song. That's, yeah. yeah, of course. And what do you do when you go into a studio and you want to make the biggest song? How do you go about it? Um... I, see, that's the thing now. I at, at this time, I don't focus on the next big song. I guess that's the difference between when I was always like focused on getting the next big song. Oh, I need the next big song. So I, I, that for me kind of spoiled making the music for me. Being um, with maybe the labels, they wanted like, oh, hey, did they ever pressure part, you? Yeah, partly. Yeah. yeah. But not to say that they pressured, but you would might continuously give something send some songs that you just like for you but they don't work for radio that's not what's playing on the radio now that's not what's popular at this present time that's we don't feel we can sell that and that might be something that is just tied up in your emotion that might be an emotional song it might and be you slow. can't actually release it you're under contract you're not allowed to no. you might even feature on a song with somebody else and the label will say, nah, <laughs> not time. We can't put you out at, at, at this time or we've got other plans for whatever it is, you know? And especially, as I said, with, so with, with the music doing that, because sometimes um, 
Just make you take, oh, you know, I can't bother to make that. that I, can't wanna, I don't want to make that song today. I don't want to make a song at 110, 20 or 120, whatever BPM. I'm feeling. Come on, let's get happy, Marvin. Come on, let's get it. Let's, I'm feeling you're not down. Feeling, yeah. I'm feeling like this, how I'm feeling now, this emotional vibe I'm feeling right now is about, yeah, the struggles are rough. Yeah. This is where I'm at. Do, do. Mm. You get what I mean? I'm not there. Do, 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 do you get what I mean? And then, so what happened when they when they ask you to do that? When they say, "Hey, come and make a an upbeat oh, well, song," you, and you, you, you do it. You, well, obviously, you do. You do. You do what you need to do to get your money, don't you? But I mean, after again, after a period of time, even your even um, even you you don't you you're not true to yourself because you have to. Always, for me now, as a musician. And the best musicians are the ones that paint the pictures of all emotions. So they paint, you hear them happy, you hear them sad, you hear them in the middle, you hear them when they're going through a love relationship, you hear them when they had a breakup, you hear them having a good time with their family. You hear, do you get what I mean? They're just not always known as the party person mm. at every time the, the biggest acts you, like the bob marley's like even like my dad they are show they they show different versions they express themselves in different ways so i feel with the labels they are more driven to hit records so the hit record is if drill is selling right now we need a hit drill song if this is selling right now we need the next version of this and it's a business, so you can't knock it either. Mm. It's the, you can't. You've that's what in, they, yeah. yeah the you've, accountants you've, and lawyers. You've walked yeah. into somebody's building. They've gave you some money. Mm. Now you give me what I want. But you can't. But you really can't, knock it. You can't make what you also want as well. That's you can it. try to find a balance, but mm. not, what I find in today's society, the best way to have a good relationship with a label is to come there already prepared with everything that you're doing and your vision and them to be happy with selling that vision. Be of, be already authentic and know who you are and have a foundation and then. And they're happy to sell that. Yeah. Not even, not even pretend to go, oh yeah, yeah, come, come, come over here and sign you and then have a different vision for, no, have that vision of what you have already to sell that. I think that that's what's good with the, especially with like, a lot of the Afrobeat stuff, like yeah, the um, Whiz yeah, Kids, yeah. the Burner Boys, and they have found relationships with labels where they allow to just express themselves. And I think that's because of the um, back work, that, the back work sounds crazy, but the work that they've done previously already, Bro. they put in so much of work that it's like when they go into these buildings and to these places, it's like, no, this is what it is. It's like, yep, yeah, okay. Where, where, yeah, is that where you want to go? That's where we're going. Do you know? You know why? Because we, I mean, we interviewed Wanda Banton. I don't know if you heard. Like he's done uh, Noah Halla, which is like a massive. It's an awesome tune. I know the song. I know. You the already song, know. But I know the art. Yeah, but I know yeah. The song. Wanda Banton mm -hmm. and, and Summertime and things like just you know, like like yourself, like just amazing artist, right? And his he was signed by a music video director. Okay. So, and the music video video director sent him some beats from a producer that he knew, and it was just an organic thing yep. because the Afrobeat scene is very kind of new yep. to the whole. And they're just like, "No, let's just make our own labels. Let's just yep. let's just shoot our own videos. Yep. Let's just do this and let's do that." And now I think maybe the reason why is what you're saying is they have that connection is because they're like, "Oh, like you're feeling kind of bad. All right, cool, man. Like let let's get a project out. You're feeling kind of low and you're feeling sad right now. So cool, cool. Um, and it, it is if it doesn't do well, it is what it is, man. Like that's on you. Like so maybe it's more organic that way." And that's that's the way it needs to kind of be. Whereas the old heads and and the the big boys that have been doing it for years and years, they need to kind of learn a thing or two from. But but again, the source. I guess that's what is when we were talking about um, the good thing about Spotify and the internet. That is the good side, because if you can bring your audience and mm. get grab gravitate a core audience with your original stuff that you have, the business corporate business mm. they will come and get involved. And throw money at your thing, not say, oh, come over here, we'll give you some money and follow what we want. No, we're happy to pay for what you have already. You know? When they're throwing money, let's say let's say a label approaches an artist, mm -hmm. what well, what advice would you would you give them? So they, they, people say that when someone offers you a million dollars, they've mm -hmm. got ten. Or they've got yeah. five or whatever, you oh, know. Well, yeah, well, how, how do you go about it, man? That, that, that is the truth. So first things first, it is about what you negotiate. You know, you get what you negotiate. Um, always lawyer up first. Always, 100% lawyer. Yeah, you're always going to need a lawyer. 
one hundred percent. Um, don't sign anything without a lawyer. Um, and you know, your your first contract might not be your best. It might not be the best. Nine times out of ten, it's not the best. But so long as you negotiate a way that you can get into the building, get into the business, and you know that it says, okay, once I'm in and I've done well, that I get returns back for doing that. Because you might, you get what I mean. Like m nowadays, the artists, um, especially if they don't have a massive background, they're probably only going. They're not going to get much for their first deal. Do you mm, know what I mean? Cool. So, no, yeah. that's great advice, man. Just get get a lawyer, or you know, get people behind you. Hundred percent lawyer. No, never. No contracts um, without the lawyer. And yeah, it's you know, or a business consult with them, maybe a business mentor on the side, and have other people, other artists, you can rebound ideas from. Yeah, but again, when you're dealing with record companies you're dealing with contracts yeah and these contracts can be very tricky life or death <laughs> literally <laughs> well yeah. of an artist yeah. yeah yeah because you might end up signing yourself away forever without not even realizing it or signing your way away your royalties for nothing like literally do you get what i mean yeah. so it's like no make sure you negotiate your first contract if it's not the best you negotiate so that it doesn't last long mm. a short period of time Make sure that I you this is what you want. If I need to sell, how much do I need to sell? Hundred thousand. All right, I sell hundred thousand units. After that, my next negotiation. Obviously, you're gonna give me what I deserve. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever thought about managing artists or? Yeah, um, I I have. Um, because I mean, I, Australia, man, like no, you'd be able to see talent. Oh, hundred percent. That is my honestly. That's my next move. Mm. Um, for anyone yeah. out there. Maybe they yeah, can beat you up on that. Yeah, no, we've got, we've got a label. We've got a, a, a little company that we've, we put together. Me, Crown Heights, the band itself. Um, we, we put together a little label, and wow. we're, we're trying to. We are trying to do that. It's obviously again because I'm Crown Heights is early. As I said, it's an early band. I'm not trying to get them established. We're trying to get their first album finished. Do you get what I mean? Get that out of the way so that they can solidify themselves as Australia, one of Australia's top reggae bands. Do you get what I mean? Um, so once I've done that maybe next year we can start looking at some other acts and getting some music together for some for some other artists as well um is it mostly like is it could be is reggae but also uh Afro no, no, artists, no. it could be anything you, you, you got remember i um i even i still even do my publishing with universal publishing so i still write for other acts as well so that I still have the pop songs in me. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? So amazing, I, man. Yeah, well, yeah, because you, you need to get, you still need to make money, um, you know? So it's like, so yeah, so when it comes to, it's not just reggae. I love reggae. That's my, that's where I'm at. Like, mm. Do you get what I mean? That's what I When love. you talk about writing for people, do, did you ever have people write for your music? No, uh, never had no one write for me. Uh, I've written with people. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. That's that's huge. Exactly. Because when I'm in the studio with the kids, mm -hmm. I'm kind of writing with them. Sometimes I'll just finish off something for them because they're just their mental capacity. They're they're just overwhelmed, and I'm well, like, hey, why don't you just da -da 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 and da -da -da and just finish it off? Is that's from that. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm perfectly happy to write on my own. I yeah, write yeah, most yeah. Of my songs of on my own. Yeah, yeah. But you'll find if you want a good vibe and a good studio energy. The best sessions are when everyone's involved. And it's not a case of, oh, people are worried about, oh, I make sure my name's on this song or, 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 and all that. It's no, oh, no, this would be great if you put this on and the artist is open and willing. And it to, makes sense. To take chances as well. Yeah. Because music, especially when you're recording, it's, it's, it's fine to make mistakes because you can just record again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, next, move on. You might have a thousand <laughs> ideas and then the producer might go, hey, let's get let's get a hundred, like let's get 10 of those ideas and just kind of work with those first. And Do you get like, what I mean? All right. Yes. And then even you, someone in the corner might come up with the, the, the best line for that song just by sitting there going, hey, I think you should do it. And you give it the chance. So there's a, as I said, the best sessions come with you know, when the whole, the studio's rocking and everyone's in there and it, and everyone, because remember, with music especially, it's the best feeling, even if it's five of you in there, all five of you are going, oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> did you run to something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you I, get what I mean? Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. I feel you, man. Yeah. These young kids, like, yeah, they, they probably need to realize that more, that that, that energy is is so vital to making an amazing song. Yes. Yeah. That that is one of the most important things that people don't realize that 
It's it's only like I feel like an artist, like a boxer in the ring. It's like cool, like they're the one fighting, they're the one throwing the punches. But then you've got to have like the break, and then someone comes in and they pat the, pat yes, the head down, man. You've got someone yes. with the water. They can't be going over and asking for a water. They can't be dripping in the sweat. They, they got to have the coach saying, "Look, man, you and you got beaten, but." Next one, just go for a second jab here. And as an artist as well, sometimes you can be in your own zone yeah. and can be so in your own zone, you've actually tuned out to what's going on. Mm. Do you get what I mean? You get so too in your own head. Yeah. So you're just all in, all in, it's all, in, you're all enclosed. You're all here. Everything's here. Oh, me, 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 me. And then you're in, oh, this, oh, this would be great. And then what you're doing is you might come and they might like, no, that's not it, man. It's like, cause you're, that's because you've been, you're completely zoned out. It's like, no. Embrace everything that's going on in the room. Oh yeah, idea. Oh yeah, we could do this. You should try this. Oh Marvin, why don't you try this? And as I said, giving it the chance, you you don't know what you could come up with. So because music, like com it's commu yeah, definitely, it's music's communication. Yes. At the end of the day, a song, no matter how amazing and vibey it is, you've got to communicate a message, and it's got to touch people. And it's got to touch Every people. Everybody else has to, not just you, not have just to have you. the feeling. Yeah. You ha have to make sure that. You, let me throw it to you and you can capture the same vibe like oh yeah like yeah. that's 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 music yeah and, that, and this is another one for the road man <laughs> yes, big ups man appreciate you coming through bro come on bro say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah man now hey, look where, Crown Heights the band Marvin Priest the artist uh, where can they find you man um, oh, on all social media, you know, Facebook, Marvin Priest, Twitter, Marvin Priest, Instagram, Marvin Priest, Snapchat, Marvin Priest, all of them, just Marvin Priest. You on Snapchat? Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm on there. Yeah. yeah. But like, just the spot, just listen I, to the I, music. I, well, no, I'm on there, but I'm on there. Same thing. So you'll see me, my rehearsal sessions. I mean, you'll see most of my social media, you'll see I'm either posting about gigs, uh, performances in in the backgrounds, like in the Snapchats and stories you see about rehearsals or my daughter. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where, that's my life. Like, you know. So yeah, um, tune in there. Make sure you tune into Crown Heights. As I said, new album. Um, look out for the shows coming up this summer. Uh, some a new single coming out for me as well. Looking maybe October, and yeah. Just stay blessed and stay positive. Look out for the event from yes, the Oz versus sir. Vibes that's coming out on the channel too. Oh uh, yes, I can't wait to see it, bro. Oh, oh, I can't wait, man. I'm just vibing, bro. I'm just there, just jamming out the multi cam, <laughs> bro. Just, just feeling it, man. It's crazy. Me. Yeah, yeah. Now, once again, pre really appreciate you coming Thanks, through, bro. man. Like, I, I really respect your music, man. Always. And so many other people that they, they love your tunes, man. And, no. and um, we don't, we won't stop, bro. Always pumping. Yeah. <laughs> One for yes. the road, man. Be got yourselves, yes. man. Respect. Take care. Peace. Later. Yes, bro. <laughs>